Good morning, dear friends. What a joy for us to be together again, sitting at the feet of Jesus and listening to our greatest teacher, the Holy Spirit. And he wants to say something to us this morning, which can be a great help and a guide for our lives today. Today I would like to speak, some, share something based on Genesis chapter 22, verse 1. And then again, Job chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. It has to do with faith. Testing of faith. Anything that is not tested is of no value. In the same way, faith which is not tested cannot be strong. And faith that is not tested cannot be trusted either. Christian faith is, a, is called a, 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 a a growing, a living faith. Uh, anything which is alive grows. And that means Christians' of faith is supposed to be growing and ever growing and becoming stronger and stronger. And um, it grows from one level to the next level. There are basically three levels of faith. Jesus addressed it, little faith, and great faith and then perfect faith. You can examine yourself and find out which level of faith you are. It is by trial that the, that the character of a Christian is formed. And without a trial, your character cannot be made perfect in your life. The goal of character in a Christian is to have the same character which was in Jesus Christ, explained to us by the Apostle Paul in his letter to Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 to 9. I believe three virtues in man God is going to test and he always does it. Number one, he is going to test our faith he is going to test our commitment and then he is going to come uh, test our love but this morning my only purpose is to talk about the testing of faith testing of faith what do we understand by testing of faith there are two aspects of faith number one faith involves faithfulness and number two, faith also involves trust. Now, it means how reliable you are, how uh, trustworthy you are, and how dependable you are. And can God count on you? Can God always trust you and say, I know my servant so and so? You know what God said concerning Abraham? That's exactly what God said concerning Abraham. I know my servant Abraham. And the reason I want to bless him, and I am going to bless him tremendously, and make him a blessing to all the nations, is because I know I can depend on him to teach his children, and then his children's children, and then his children, children's children, generations to come, all the commandments and the statutes I have taught him. I know my servant Abraham will do it. And that's why Abraham was so blessed. And even today, after nearly uh, 3,000 3, years, here is one name that is international. And he's known as the father of three major religious groups, Jews, Islam, and Christian. Now, when trials of life hit you hard, will you remain faithful to God? How about Job? Could God confidently testify concerning you as he could concerning Job? Listen to God's testimony concerning Job. There is no one righteous, upright, 
and the blameless as my servant Job. That was a testimony of God concerning Job. And he could confidently say it to the devil himself. Could God trust and rely on Job to prove it? Job chapter 42 verses 7 and 8. There you read the three friends of Job had to go and ask for mercy from Job. And that tells you the story of God's faithfulness. In Ezekiel chapter 14 verse 14, God included Job among the three finest examples of righteousness. If you have faith in the Lord, Jesus Christ, you must be faithful to him. There is no use or uh, meaning in saying, yes, I believe in Jesus. I have faith in Jesus. I have faith in Jesus. That is, these are mere words. And if you have real faith in Jesus, then you must remain faithful to Jesus Christ, no matter what your circumstances, no matter what cost you will have to pay for your faith in Jesus Christ, you will prove yourself to be a worthy servant of God if you remain faithful. So the first aspect of a faith uh, is faithfulness. And the second aspect of faith is trust. The Bible says Abraham trusted God when he offered Isaac. Hebrews chapter 11 verses 17 to 19. Trust, what is trust? Trust is the practical aspect of faith. It is trust that makes faith come alive. Moses' mother trusted God of Noah when he made an ark, a basket, which is, which is the word used there is, is the same as Noah's ark. And when he made that basket and put baby Moses inside it and pushed him into the waters of Nile, what was he doing? She was trusting God. She not only had a faith. It is easy to have a faith. Yes, I believe that God can do it. But when it comes to practical aspect, we lack that confidence. But the mother of Moses, she exercised trust in her God when she pushed that basket into the waters of night. The rest of the... The rest is history. What happened? And Moses grew up in the palace. And Moses was taken care of hundreds of times better than Moses' own mother could take care of him. Simply because she trusted God. Now, this is incident is recorded in the book of Exodus chapter 2. Here is a good example of trusting God with your life. Now, three more examples of uh, men and women who trusted God with their life. Joseph in Genesis, he trusted his God for 13 long years. He was sold and then resold and then he was put in prison, falsely accused of uh, something he had never even dreamed of doing. And through it all, he always remained faithful to his God, Jehovah God. And that is trust, my friend. He never, never gave up his faith in God. And then Mordecai in Esther, he risked his life by sitting at the gate of the king's palace and organizing uh, weeping and morning uh, exercises. And how about, uh, about uh, Esther herself? Look at her trust. She not only had a faith in her Jehovah God, she trusted this God when it was not lawful for her 
to walk into the throne room of the king without being invit invited, though she was the queen. Death was would be the sentence. And she walked into the throne room of her husband, the king, by saying, I will nevertheless go. If I perish, I perish. That became one of the most famous sentences from the Bible of a woman exercising not only mere faith, saying, yes, God can do it. Let us have a three days of fasting and then wait. No, she not only fasted and prayed in faith, but then she trusted God to take care. She did something about it. She walked right into the presence of the king and the rest again is history. That is trusting God with your life. And how about Daniel? Daniel took his life in his hand and he trusted God to do justice. And how marvelously, miraculously, God proved to be faithful to those who will remain faithful and trustworthy. He trusted and therefore, he served under four world emperors and lived to be about 95 years. Why? Because he stood firm. Trust God, even with your life, and God will never fail. Here is, where is your faith? Are you willing to trust God with your life? You know, we exercise this kind of trust daily when we go to see a doctor and the doctor suggests a surgery. What do you do? There is a paper you have to sign before the surgery. And what does that paper say? If something happened, we will not be blamed. Huh? You are actually placing your life in a human hand to the doctors. My friends, more de real is our God. He's a very present help in trouble. And therefore, let us learn to honor our God and exalt Him and uh, lift Him up by our, not only faith, but also our trust in Him. Believing that God will make it right. God will see us through and God will exalt his name by bringing deliverance to those who trust in him. He will never fail but how about us? Can God trust you and me? Answer this question. God has never, never failed in any of his promise. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for speaking to us tonight. You have shown us the right way of believing in you. Believing can be just a mental exercise. Mentally we accept, yes, God is able to do this, that, etc. But when it comes to a practical life, we lack that trust to believe that God will see us through. And even bring our life into that dangerous position declaring Jesus Christ as our only Lord and God. May the Lord grant you grace and the power of the Holy Spirit. You will make it. Amen. This is a good day and have a wonderful day and enjoy it.